Now, last year I had some messages, and just as a refreshment, uh, I believe they are still valid, but I don't want to fully uh, repeat them. Um, one, as uh, Mr. Friesbach mentioned, we are the center of the UN transport conventions. And you can see uh, on, this, on this map uh, that countries that are in dark green are the ones who acceded to most of these conventions, and countries in white have not acceded to one single UN convention on transport. And light green means that not that many. So there is still a long way to go. Uh, now, uh, in the uh, vehicle regulations area, I would say that the situation is not that bad except for the uh, periodical vehicle inspections. However, you can consider the accession to the UN conventions as an indicator of governance and capacity to make your, uh, your, your economy competitive in the world. Uh, we compared the accession intensity of high-income countries who are landlocked, like Switzerland or Austria, and the low-income countries who are landlocked. Uh, like, for example, Tajikistan, but uh, I, I can uh, name others as well. Now, the uh, accession intensity to the UN conventions of the high-income countries landlocked is 86%. The landlocked low-income countries, 12%. So there is definitely a correlation even between economic competitiveness and implementation and accession to the UN conventions. Um, the main message last year was, and this is the main message this year as well, that uh, uh, the convergence of technologies and actually as a result of that, the traditional transport sector and the traditional uh, telecommunication sector, this convergence is actually calling for changing role of government. But this changing role is pushed into different directions as well by other changes, the political power shift in the world, and also uh, the uh, um, increasing concern at a multilateral level on the performance of the transport sector. So definitely there is a growing need for the use of multilateralism, like for example WP29. Now, since last year, uh, there are some achievements uh, on the ground supporting automation in the road sector, but not only the road sector. And I would like to underline that from my perspective, uh, working on inland transport, uh, we don't like saying that road, 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 because the road sector is effective if it is well connected to the other modes, and if the other modes are well used as well. Uh, so we had a couple of uh, achievements. One achievement, I would say, is that uh, for the first time in the history, um, the importance of connectivity for economic growth, social integration, and peace uh, has been recognized by the General Assembly by a resolution. And when we speak about connectivity, of course, traditionally we say connecting by roads and railroads to different countries and having an access to a port. But connectivity also means the networked, connected cars. So connectivity is more than the physical, what we can see. It is also the IT connectivity. So it's a very important thing that for the first time there is a political recognition of this important area. Um, another uh, achievement uh, since we met last year is the amendment proposal of the Vienna Conventions. Because, uh, as you all know, uh, there are lots of concerns or complaints that what is a real problem is the Vienna Conventions, because the driver must be in control of the vehicle and its animals, uh, um, if uh, it's not a motorized vehicle. Um, so, uh, well, I challenge that this is a real concern, but it has been blown out of proportions so much that politically there was a need to make a change. So now the governments agreed on the um, um, amendments uh, in the framework of the work, Working Party on Road Safety. This is the WP1. And uh, um, the agreement is, and it's not only Vienna Conventions, it's also the uh, Conventions on, on Traffic uh, Rules of 1949, which are the Geneva Conventions, so, and their uh, amendment propose, um, uh, protocols. So. Uh, the main message there is that uh, if the technology is sort of adopted by WP29 regulation, then it is in line with the principles of the Geneva and Vienna Conventions. So if 
you work well with the weaker regulations, you will not have a problem with the interpretation of the Vienna Convention, uh, in, in a simple term. However, if you are not um, a contracting party to any of the weaker regulation conventions, uh, then at least you have to have the possibility that in the car the uh, automa automation can be switched off. Because in that case, again, you don't have a conflict, a legal conflict. Um, well, as you know, this is not, it, it is the first step. So this is not the end. Um, the uh, working party recognized that uh, with this, they practically address the political concern, but much more work needs to be done to understand the different levels of automation and what changes are needed on that. And I will speak a little bit later on that as well. Then uh, a number of UN regulations on vehicle automation have been passed during the past year as well. Um, plus the Inland Transport Committee uh, uh, not only had its policy debate last year on innovations with a lot of um, inputs uh, on um, automated driving as well as uh, Google was uh, one of our speakers, but uh, uh, this year, actually, the committee decided to um, ask more work on ITS, not simply in the vehicle area, in the traffic rules area, in the infrastructure area, which are in different working parties, but in a horizontal way. So much more cooperation between the different working parties is envisaged. And maybe next year there will be a, a bigger uh, decision on support of um, uh, the use of information and communication technologies and in intelligent transport services. And last but not least, the ITS informal working group under WP29 has agreed on a new roadmap and now they are uh, um, even uh, um, change their names uh, because um, and, uh, it's automated driving is included in their area. So this is the last year, only the tip of the iceberg. But we have still a lot of our areas to look into. And uh, when I mention the liability, I'm serious about that. We cannot drop the ball after having the first uh, uh, little progress. Uh, we will have to understand much, much better the different levels of automation and their impact on safety and traffic rules. Uh, and uh, so uh, I would like to see who is representing the customers, because uh, the human beings, the individuals, are not very well uh, uh, represented so far. Uh, we understand the demand uh, from different um, other stakeholders, but the customers' interests are not that uh, included. Then infrastructure, the different speed and different life cycles uh, would uh, call for very different approach in uh, investment planning. A lot of road investment planning is, is uh, underway right now, uh, but maybe there should be even a stage construction approach for the IT connections. And it is not yet in the policy makers' uh, mind. Um, when we speak about infrastructure, I would like to consider that traffic management is part of that. And traffic management is in revolution, uh, but aren't the directions diverging? And if they are diverging, how to make sure that they will be harmonized? Because you cannot go in one direction for traffic management in cities, in another city in another uh, direction and for the intercity uh, transport again another one. Uh, <clears throat> traffic rules, perhaps the most difficult ones. <coughs> the total overhaul is needed. Um, just think of platooning. In traffic rules, we, we have the rule of having a mandatory distance between the vehicles. Uh, and so in order to allow that if somebody takes over, uh, that car has the possibility to come back. But in platooning, would that be feasible? Uh, <clears throat> and of course, uh, the traffic rules are not good if they are on a piecemeal way or at a national level or even regional. They must be at multilateral level. Uh, <clears throat> new mobility. We all speak about this convergence of ICT and transport 
at a time when new mobility patterns are coming up, more priority to public transport. There are already uh, experiments on automation for public transport, buses, uh, but how much more you can go and how much the impact on car use will, will um, have. Car share definitely changes this. And road transport is not alone, it is part of the integrated network. So multimodal transport is important. Recently we have um, uh, seen a new Australian research about uh, uh, increasing safety at level crossing through uh, um, information technologies. Um, now maybe much more can be done in that area, but I know it's costly. However, the benefits would be very high. Impact. Uh, the impacts are not well understood yet. There are lots of lots of uh, promises Hopefully, uh, we have to uh, have the understanding sooner or later how these promises or impact assessment can be carried out. But as so, we have to understand the impacts on jobs, the social impact, the impact of the, uh, the societal impact, the, the change of, of lifestyle, um, uh, the change in mobility. And, uh, and also think of the digital divide among countries. Uh, do we want to see that uh, some vehicles will not be able to enter uh, less developed countries because their infrastructure is not ready to handle those vehicles? Or are they really safer under different conditions? And regulations. Uh, <coughs> we have heard that uh, there are different uh, standard setting uh, activities in ITU. We know that, very important activities. We know that there are, we don't call them standards, we have regulations. We uh, set the regulations. But with this convergence, we have to start thinking about making sure that there is this one-stop shop approach. One-stop shop so that uh, regulations are not going to be discussed and agreed on separately and then long process to harmonize them. By the way, we have experience of that bad practice in several areas. Uh, instead of that, it's better to have one already harmonized compromise solution. So many multilateral regulators might have a problem with this and we have to make sure that the multilateral stakeholders are around the same table so that we can service the the people first of all but also the growth of the industries in the most efficient way so these are the challenges there are much more but these are the challenges we are looking at in this year and uh, I, with that i have reached my uh, area of conclusions that uh, there is a long way to convert all these challenges into opportunities um, the Inland Transport Committee is determined to continue to be a platform even more for consultations and to turn the results uh, into legislative decisions. And you are more um, welcome, most welcome, to join forces with us. Thank you.